Good evening, church. Great to be here tonight in clement weather outside. People with all sorts of lurgies that can't get here, but we're here because God has brought together the people he wanted here tonight. It's all for Jesus, and he is unstoppable. In his name, nothing is impossible. Move around, greet as many people as you can. Find someone you haven't said hello to all day, probably never met in your life before. Give me a very best greeting in Jesus' name. All around the building. Please be seated, church. If you're going to kids' church, now it's your turn to be on your way out over to Children's Ministry Centre where there's something special for you. Huh. Wow. Yep. Alpha is coming, and you've got the details on there. Check it out. There'll be a big banner down the front fence in the next day or two. If it's not raining, it'll be there tomorrow. If it's raining, you can come put it up for me you want to but man the umbrella we can do this oh that's tuesday right yeah fantastic well patterns and warnings that's what we're looking about we've talked about through this series about patterns and warnings that uh, crop up in your scripture as having uh, some similarity to the weather patterns and the weather warnings that we get and uh, i don't know if we got those pictures tonight let's check it out you'll know if we got if we got there we go uh, that's your weather pattern there and uh, right now we do have a cold front coming in like that, just a, a, a low and a cold front coming in, the same over in the east coast. Over there's is right down the coast right now. It's pouring with rain there. And uh, you can uh, bet that the one that we're getting is going to spread over and join up with the other one. And so in South Australia and Victoria in the next few days, they're getting rain. They're getting rain. So it's raining all over the nation. And uh, the, the weather pattern, but you see the, the warning, that's, that's the next one. We've got the next slide there, which... Uh, I should change that 10 weeks, only 10 bucks. That's got nothing to do with anything. It's just a, a weather warning, severe weather warning. And people who live in the Pilbara are, are used to these because in the cyclone season, they get them all the time and, and they're quite familiar. They know what to do. They know what to expect. Uh, cyclone number three, whatever. They know exactly what they've got to do to stay safe and to avoid damage. And so the material that we've been looking at in this series of messages uh, comes from your New Testament, but... It draws on patterns and examples from your Old Testament accounts and how the people of God in those days uh, became victims of those patterns because they did not take any notice of the warnings. So those warnings are coming to us. And I, and I just got to say to you, often I hear in church life, people say things like this, oh, oh, that was old covenant. So, uh, you know, uh, so it's, it's got nothing to do with us. And uh, that kind of renders that the Old Testament stuff useless to us. And I just want to say how erroneous that is to think like that. Totally wrong. You're going to be shortchanged. Uh, I, I, it's, to follow that logic isn't going to serve you well at all. There is a connection and a continuity between the Old and the New Testament. It's not as if one's separate and that's done with, and it's a different old God back there, and now we've got a loving God back here that they didn't have back there. Same God, same God. And the new grows out of the soil of the Old Testament. Uh, the God of the Old Testament is the same God that shows up in the New Testament. But obviously at the cross of Jesus Christ, that signaled the end of the Old Covenant and the beginning of the New Covenant. And what the blood sacrifices of animals in the Old Covenant could not do, Jesus Christ on the cross has done. Listen to these verses. 1 Peter 2, 24 he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross uh, that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Thank you. Hebrews 9.25, Christ did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that's not his own, with animal's blood, in other words. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world, that is, every time someone sinned, he'd have to go and do it again and again, but he, he did not. But he has uh, appeared once for all. And the Greek term uh, that is translated once for all is ephapax. It means once for all, he didn't have to do it again. He did it 
as the non-repeatable thing because it covered the whole thing for all time. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. So obviously, at the cross and after the cross, there, there were changes. There were changes. There, but, but the patterns for us from the Old Testament on which the warnings are based still carry weight and relevance for us. I did a diagram of... of yeah, that's it, it's back again, which I showed you last Sunday night, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because you can view this on YouTube. It's posted there. Before you go to our website, you'll find it, or if you're on the Facebook page, uh, go there and you'll find our, our U-version rendition of the message right there. But uh, seriously, the Passover lamb, uh, that's Jesus, and there are no more Passover lambs. It's Old Covenant because Jesus has done that one. And, and the Sabbath, you, you know, you read in Colossians 2 uh, that... that the Sabbath, the reality, however, is found in Christ. It's no longer a day. All days are the Lord's day. And the Sabbath rest is found in the person of Christ. That's, that's the cross for you. Uh, Jesus said, you have heard it said, but I say to you, re read that in Matthew 5 and 6, you find a whole lot of them. And it, it really means from purity of behavior to purity of thought life. Uh, that's what Jesus is talking about. Uh, but some things never really did change. Honor your father and mother, that was in the old covenants. In the new covenant, didn't change, really, except back in the old, it was uh, that it, it may go well for you and you may live a long life in the land, the land of Israel, but in the new covenants, that you may live a long life in the world because the gospel takes uh, the good news of a right relationship with God from one nation to the whole world. Well, it's still honor your mother and father, so anyone here... Just thinking about that, that it may go well for you. I always think the reverse side of that is if you don't honour them, it won't go well for you. So that, that's, that's, that stand didn't happen. Didn't. And the tithe. Prior to the cross, it was to finance the staff of the temple. And after the cross, it's to finance the staff of the local church. So many of the things in the Old Testament account uh, have relevance for us. Some have been changed and uh, some continue on. And a key uh, phrase here is, in the same way. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 13 and 14, since we mentioned the tithe there, let's get, take that example. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple uh, get their food from the temple and that those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? And you can read about that back in uh, Numbers and Exodus and it's talking about the tithe which was taken to the, to the temple for the, to, 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 to pay for the uh, salaries, as it were, of the, of the staff, the Levites. And then it says this, in the same way, in the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. In other words, he's saying, in the same way, uh, back there in the temple, in the Old Testament temple, the staff, the Levites, were paid out of the received tithe. In the same way, the staff in the New Testament church are to be paid by the tithe. So if someone says, yeah, hey, tithe, it's old covenant. You know, it's not relevant today. You, you, you just tell them, read your Bible, because you haven't read that in the Bible. You wanted to get out of it, and so you made that up. In the same way. He's talking about the tithe. So the new covenant grows out of the soil of the old covenant. And whilst there is a discontinuity between the old covenant and the new covenant, there's also a connection and a continuity uh, between the old and new covenants and the old and new testament stories. And there are reference points in the old, old testament for the new covenant faith community called the church. And whilst much has changed, as I showed in that diagram before, there are still reference points for us in the Old Testament. 1 Corinthians 9, 14, in the same way. And the point the Apostle Paul is making here is that the collection of the tithe, as I said, in the Old Covenant dispensation for the payment of the salaries of the, of the staff, who were the Levites, in, in the same way the church staff today. And the principle in the same way applies to other necessary moral and ethical behaviour of God's people for today. Thank you, Lord, for the water. Which, which brings us to the patterns and warnings from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Now, these things, these things uh, occurred as examples, or patterns, some of your translations, to keep us from setting our hearts 
on evil things as they did in the same way. So, so the big question, now these things occurred, uh, what are these things? What's it talking about? Big, big question, what are these things? <clears throat> and I want to say that these things, it's all found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It relates to, to two, two kinds of things, good things and bad things, these things. And, and the positive things and the not so positive things. And, and the first uh, aspect of the positive things is the blessings of God's supernatural presence. God was present with these people in, in, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, in Numbers and Exodus. Read, read it there, God was there. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2. <clears throat> For I don't want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were under the cloud. And when you read this account in Exodus, you'll find that what that cloud is, God's presence, we are told, in Exodus was before them as a pillar of cloud by the day and a pillar of fire by the night. Uh, God's presence. And, and carry on. And, and that they all uh, passed through the sea, that's the Red Sea, and they're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea. So God's divine presence with his faith community is one of these things that it talks about, these things. Uh, that's the very first blessing. And baptized into Moses is a reference to belonging to that faith community that Moses was the leader of. Second one of uh, these things and a blessing of God is his divine provision. So his divine presence and his divine provision. 1 Corinthians 10, 3, same passage. They all ate the same spiritual food <coughs> and drank the same spiritual drink. Uh, they drank from the spiritual rock and the rock was Christ. That rock is the one on the first instance Moses tapped. On the second instance, God told him to talk to it, but he actually whacked it twice. And uh, for that, he didn't get in to the promised land. And people can get you mad sometimes. Yeah? Those of us are leaders. People can get you mad and cranky. And sometimes people say, you should have told them off more. I go, I don't want to whack the rock. Otherwise, you won't let me in the promised land. That's a message there for me, because that's a pattern and an example. I don't want to follow it. You got rouse on them. I've, I've gone close. I've gone close. I, I don't want to do that, you know? And you don't want to do that either. Don't whack the rock. Because the rock is Christ every time the rock was Christ. So God rained down, God, God's divine provision. God rained down manna from heaven to feed this multitude. God gave Gordon water to calm his throat down. God gave them manna. He rained it down from heaven to feed this multitude. And they go, you know, we're sick and tired of this manna. We can only do so much with that. We've tried frying it. We've tried it on toast. We've tried it every single way. We baked it. We boiled it. Uh, we've done everything with fricassee of manna. We've done the whole thing and we're sick and tired of it. And God said, I'm going to give you quail. And quail fell down from heaven. Birds. In fact, God said, I'm going to give you quail till it comes out your nostrils, God said. Now think about it. I don't know if you've ever done this. I'm drinking a coffee and someone makes you laugh and it comes out your nostrils. It's like that. Quail coming out their nostrils. God provided for them. And God gave them water from the rock when they got thirsty. Another time when they came across water but it was bitter, uh, God purified uh, the bitter water from that spring. And so to these things, 1 Corinthians 10, 6 refers firstly uh, to God's divine presence and secondly to God's divine provision in terms of positive things. And these things, 1 Corinthians 10, 6, also refers to the behavior of this congregation with which God was not pleased. 1 Corinthians 10, 5. Divine presence, divine provision, nevertheless, 1 Corinthians 10, 5, God was not pleased with most of them and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. So in spite of having the divine presence and the divine provision, they still ran amok. And you go, how could they do that? Well, these things are patterns and warnings for us because we have the divine presence and the divine provision and he wouldn't give us these patterns and warnings if it wasn't a propensity for us to run amok also in the same way they did. These things, uh, patterns and warnings in the same way. 1 Corinthians 10, 6. Now these things occurred as examples or patterns to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. These things. 1 Corinthians 10, 11, These things happened to them as examples or patterns. And were written down as warnings for us, patterns and warnings. And then, then he gives us what they are. 
just in case you miss this, he goes, it's idolatry, it's immorality, it's testing Christ, and it's grumbling. And I think about this, most of us go, yeah, I know, I get the idolatry thing, that's like false gods, <clears throat> and I get the immorality thing, but having a bit of a whinge, having a bit of a grumble, he puts them on the same level. Because they're the same, they're all up there, they're demerit points in the same level. And the patterns, patterns and warnings relate to God's displeasure and the consequences, quote unquote, for setting our hearts, for setting our hearts on and doing these evil things. So if setting our hearts is where this all goes amok for us, uh, then, then, then you know, the idolatry, the immorality, the testing Christ and the grumbling on Corinthians 10, 6. Now these things occurred as patterns or examples to keep us from setting our hearts on the evil things as they did. So the setting our hearts is key here. So we need to figure out what setting our hearts is so we don't do it. Now these guys set their hearts and th this is written here as patterns and warning for us so we don't set our hearts as they did. So I'm thinking the best way for us to figure out what setting our hearts is in this context is see what all the other translations say, or a number of them. New King James, setting our hearts. It, 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 it translates as lust after evil things. Lust. Uh, good news translation, desire evil things. The message, wanting our own way. We'll do it all by our own self. The New Living Translation, crave evil things. Uh, the NCB, wanting evil things. <clears throat> so to set our hearts, it would seem, is to lust, to desire, to crave, and to want our own way. A a and the patterns and warnings are designed to stop us in our tracks so that we don't set our hearts on things that displease God. A and since he gave us four things, idolatry, uh, immorality, testing Christ, and grumbling, <clears throat> well, well, I, I want to tell you what they all mean. Because you think I know what they are. Idolatry, false gods, immorality, getting into bed with the wrong person and all those kind of things. Testing Christ and grumbling, just, just complaining, you know. Well, well, let me give them to you in another way. Idolatry equals wanting our own way. Immorality equals wanting our own way. Testing Christ equals wanting our own way. Grumbling equals wanting our own way. Matthew Henry, great scholar of uh, a, a bygone era, he writes this. This caution stands because carnal appetites indulged are the root and source of much sin. And you know, carnal appetites, yeah, the word carnal we don't tend to use that much in church like we ought to perhaps. And so everyone, what, what does that mean? What's that mean? Carnal appetites amount to wanting our own way rather than God's way. And carnal, in, 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 wherever it's used, in whatever translation in, in your Bible, is always used as the opposite of spiritual. There are spiritual people who are on God's page and go on God's way, and there are carnal people who are not. And they have the name of Christian or the name of church attender or whatever, but, but they're, just, they're just carnal. Uh, they've got no spirituality going on at all, so that's what it means. So wanting our own way, and, 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 and just about every time, and therefore justifying our own way as the godly way. I, I, I can't tell you how many people have come to me that got into bed with the wrong person and they go, you know, God has told me to do this. I go, He's already told you in the book not to do it. And the politicians can say what they like about any moral issue, but if God's story told us in the book, it doesn't matter what they legislate about this, it's still wrong. I'm trying to justify it by, well, it's just all love. That's a Beatles song. Not a Bible song. <laughs> I think about idolatry. Moses up the mountain. He's gone for a while. By the way, Joshua was up there just a little bit behind him. That, that doesn't regularly come out in the story, but there he is learning how to do this. Aaron's back down on the plains looking after the people like the assistant pastor. Be careful about which assistant pastor you leave in charge. Because <laughs> it wasn't long because before the people started to complain, grumble about Moses. It's about idolatry, but it started with grumbling. 
They go, you know, this man, he's taken us out of Egypt. We had lots of good food down there. And now we've hardly got anything to eat. And he's up the mountain. Why don't we choose another leader and go back to Egypt? In fact, I think we need new gods. Because the ones we got aren't serving us all that well. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1, come make us gods who will go before us. And so Aaron said, well, well, look, I think I can do that. He is a bit of a while up there. He's gone a while. Why don't you give me all your jewellery and we'll see what we can do for you. And they took up all their gold earrings and gold wedding rings, gold watches, all the gold, and they put in a pot and boiled it and he made gods in the shape of calves, remembering that the Egyptian god had been a bull. So it's like a little bull. And the next minute they're dancing and prancing around the gods and Moses is up the mountain with God and God goes, I think there's a bit of a party going on down below and you better get back down there and see what's going on in your absence. And he goes down and he goes, what's happening down here? And Aaron goes, you know, this gave me the gold and I threw it in the fire and out popped a calf. And Moses goes, yeah, right. And you ought to read that story in Exodus chapter 32 and see what happened next. They tried to justify their idolatry by saying, this is God. There's a religiosity here and a spirituality. Because we often try to cover it up that way. And the grumbling. I, I, I'm going to lock all the rest in under grumbling because we could go all night here on this and I'm going to spend some time on this stuff next week. The grumbling. Numbers 12, 1 and 2. Miriam and Aaron. Remember, Miriam and Aaron biologically are Moses sister and brother, Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses. As soon as that's going on in your church, you've got trouble. Well, we love our pastor, but don't really agree with what he's doing with this and that and the other thing. Goodness me, Quinana, you went there. Whew, why would you do that? Unsaved people, that's why. And the people of God that need the pastoral care. And Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses. Why? This is what it says. Because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. They go began to talk about him to others, saying, we just don't like that man's wife. Guys, if someone starts to do that about you, guys, if you start to do it about someone and his wife, expect to get punched out. And I'm not promoting that, but hey, you might make the man mad. Because of his Cushite wife, for he married a Cushite. And then they said this, because it really didn't have anything to do with that at all. Has the Lord only spoken through Moses? <laughs> now we see where they're going. See, first it was spirituality. This woman wasn't a true Israelite. And so they're going there first to give it a spirituality. And now here's their real deal. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? And they ask, hasn't he also spoken through us and the Lord heard this because he always will the real deal was we want some platform time and he's not giving us any well he's very smart not to because they showed up to be who they were and Aaron is the golden calf man remember that one why would you give him any platform time if you're smart, you wouldn't. And the Lord heard this, and you know the rest of the story. Miriam was struck with leprosy, and I'm not quite sure why Aaron wasn't also, but it was a lesson for him anyway. You'd think no one else would do this for the rest of the journey, wouldn't you? You'd think the grumbling would stop right now, yeah? And these things are written as examples, as patterns and warnings for us. Well, it's only a couple of chapters. In fact, Numbers 14, they get into it again, but I'm not going to do that one tonight. Uh, but Numbers 16, 1 to 3. Korah, a notable man in the assembly, by the way, rose up against Moses. <laughs> He's got all the details there about him. Rose up against Moses. And with, with them, and he had all his mates there with him, were 250 Israelite men. Yeah. And, and they came as a group to oppose Moses. Why do you set yourself above the Lord's assembly? This pretty much sounds like the last two, doesn't it? The interesting thing this time, that they came to Moses and to Aaron. Aaron had done the deed before. He was going, well, who do you think you are? And now they come to Moses and Aaron and go, who do you two dudes think you are? 
Well, you, you know, the answer is we think we are the people that God has actually commissioned and ordained for this role. That's who we think we are. And, and you know what happened? See, what they're trying to do, they're trying to justify, they want a place on their platform, they want a place that they haven't got, that God hasn't given them to have. And God says to Moses and Aaron, step back. Something bad's going to happen to these people. Don't be near them. And they step back, big hole opens up in the ground and Korah and his 250 odd men went down the hole and haven't been heard of since. And my New Testament tells me these things happened as patterns and warnings for us. We see the patterns and we have the warnings and 2,000 odd years ago some very religious people wanted their own way. That's essentially that's what it is. And they took hold of the Son of God and they nailed him to a cross and they crucified him and they justified their own way by convincing themselves that they were doing the godly thing. He claimed to be the Son of God, and that's not right. And so the pattern is here, and the warnings are for us. Whether it's idolatry, whether it's immorality, whether it's testing Christ, whether it's grumbling, it's one in their own way. And God is providing us with the patterns and the warnings, and he provides us with a way out in case we're going down that track. By the way, Exodus means way out. But our Lord Jesus Christ himself said in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way to the Father, and he is the way out of the temptation in Jesus' name. And the way out for you is, first of all, to recognize the pattern and the warning. Go, hey, ooh, I think I went there. And God is calling us all tonight to focus on Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Father in heaven, tonight you give us the patterns and the warnings, just like in Queensland and New South Wales, right this very day you've given them patterns and warnings. The weather is coming, severe weather patterns. Warnings there to batten down the hatches, to stand safe, to avoid the floods. The patterns and warnings for us here tonight to avoid the temptation, whatever it might be, wanting your own way. Holy Spirit, cause us here in these moments to want Jesus' way, want the way of the Father. Cause us, Father, to walk in the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus. And I ask these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, church. Let's stand. Hey, tonight, if you're needing ministry of any kind, prayer, come down the front. I'd love to pray with you tonight if God's calling you to do that. We've got a song to sing as you think about that and get ready to move forward in Jesus' name. Let's sing. Thank you, Father, for your ongoing presence in our lives. Lord, so many things uh, threaten to uh, tug us away, to call us away, to, to make us go in a different direction, but you're always with us. Thank you for your patterns and your warnings because we want to stay on track with you, Father God. We, we, want, to, we want to be the people you want us to be. Uh, Father, we, we look to you tonight. We look to you. Father, I want to pray for anyone in the house that's struggling with any issues that are uh, threatening to, to, to upset their lives, to call them off track. Uh, be their strength tonight, Father. Pour out your grace on each one tonight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. People, I just want to say a couple of things before you move. Uh, firstly, there is raisin toast in the cafe, and you can help yourself and butter that up. So. Uh, you know, hang around for a while. Be someone on the information desk in there also. Uh, but the programs we've got coming up, you know, like on Sunday the 17th of uh, July in the PM service, not only do we have a child dedication on that night, but we've got the, the man from Compassion, uh, Tim Hanna, coming to speak to us, and you, you won't want to miss that at all. And then, of course, on Tuesday the 26th, we start with our Alpha course right here. I was going to say it's going to be on the screen, but that would be wrong. It's going to be on the screens because you might notice something that's happened since you were here this morning. Right above you there, Mandy. That's where you need to look. Right up there, yeah. That's here. And up here. Now, of course, we do have a youth event in here on Friday night. That's, 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 that's problematic. Uh, there will be cages around them in the next little while to protect them. 
because I can just see, I can see nasty things happening and there'll be unhappiness somewhere. That should that happen. But it's all going to be happy because we're going to protect our investment here and uh, watch that for the last time because it'll be over there next time. Painter's coming in to paint that. The little dots are there. He knows exactly where he's got to paint now. It, it's, it's precision stuff, I've got to tell you. Uh, Mr. Mark Buckle, is not precision? Is, not, is it not? It is. And uh, we're here at one o'clock today making all this happen and uh, fascinating stuff to see people go up ladders and, and stuff like that. All good stuff? Be blessed, guys. Have a fantastic week. Uh, most of you aren't probably going to Connect Group. Most of those are wrapped up until term two. There's a couple of them still going. I know that finishing off this week. Uh, but be blessed. Men, men, your group is changing. Wherever you were meeting before, you won't be meeting again. But news is coming to you in the next little while. You're meeting in a new location. In term two, you've got Valiant Men as your program coming up. And you won't want to miss that either. Be blessed. Have a fantastic week. Look forward to seeing you soon.